What's up, everybody? Lawrence Aponte here. And on this episode of Ecom Power Team, we're going to build a Shopify store. What I'm going to do is I'm going to build the store from scratch and show you guys exactly how I would build it. And I'm also going to show you guys some tools um, that can help you ease this process along and make this really fast, quick, and easy for you. So a few good things to have handy if possible before we start is if you have like a store name idea or a domain just kind of in your head, that's great. If you kind of have like a store logo that you want to go with, um, that's great. So if, if you don't have either one of these soon, no worries. I'm actually going to show you guys a hack that I use um, to kind of find domains and build really logos and like um, really quick. Um, if you have a Google Analytics account, that'd be great as well. If you don't, no worries. There'll be um, some training on how to create a Google Analytics account and a Facebook ads account if you have one of those as well. So let's go ahead and dive right into it. And um, I'll go ahead and show you guys. So the first thing you want to do is go to um, shopify.com slash techademics. Have it over here. And basically, it, it gives an extended trial as opposed to, you know, Shopify's current 14-day trial is actually a 30-day trial and then 50% off um, your Shopify plan for the next two months after that. So um, basically, this is pretty uh, straightforward. You're going to put an email address, your password, and create your store name. Like I said, if you don't have a store name, no worries. I'm actually going to show you guys a resource that I use to kind of streamline the process. Um, keep in mind, all these resources and these tools that I'm mentioning, they'll actually be available in the Techademics Toolkit. So you'll be able to see all of the swipes and all the resources that we're mentioning here um, throughout this training. So the one of the sites that I go to is called Lean Domain Search. And what Lean Domain Search does is basically a domain name generator. You can put in one, two, three keywords into this search box, and it'll literally make a bunch of combinations of domains that are actually available. So for this training, what we're going to do is we're going to create a, a uh, somewhat general store, so to speak. Um, I, I like the outdoors. I like to go hiking and, and kayaking and kind of go um, explore the outdoors here. So I think that's the, the store that we'll go ahead and build. So we'll just kind of use the, the word outdoor as our keyword and let's see what kind of comes up. So as you can see, it found 2,518 availables um, domains that have the uh, name outdoor in it. See, there's tons and tons of them, okay? So basically what I like to do is just kind of go through this list and find anything that kind of pops and um, kind of go with that and see how it, how I can go. So for the purposes of this video, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to speed it up and show you and see until I find one that I like, and then um, we'll go from there. I'll actually put a time. You don't have to spend hours on this. I know 2,500 is, is a lot of domains to go through, but I'm just going to put a timer on here so you can see how long it takes me to actually find a domain. And it shouldn't take you but just a few minutes. Just kind of look for something here. So go ahead and just start it here and look for a domain. Okay. I'll just speed it up.
Okay, so here we go. Look at that, it took about two minutes and I think Outdoor Splash is a winner. Sounds pretty catchy, um, it's available. So yeah, so what we'll do is we'll actually, I'll go ahead and just purchase this domain here. Okay, since it is available and come here to my GoDaddy. GoDaddy is pretty easy, just simply search it there to make sure it is available. There it goes for $2.99. We'll continue to cart. Now some of this, um, you may see some stuff blurred out here and it's just personal information. So don't worry, I'm not trying to hide anything. And then purchase that domain. Um, you may see some stuff blurred out. Like I said, it's going to be my personal information that I don't want out there as, as, as you can um, imagine. So what we're going to do now is um, you can do one of two things. Uh, you, they will actually give you like a free month of their business email. Um, it's not necessarily, it costs $5 a month after that. Um, or you can set up email forwarding because it's free. So for the for the training, I'm going to show you guys how to do the email forwarding. So once you get your domain name, in this case, we've purchased Outdoor Splash. What you want to do is secure a Gmail account for that email. So that's where your support will go. So for this, I would want to name it, you know, Outdoor Splash at gmail.com. So what we'll do now is we'll just go create a quick Gmail account and um, so we can have it for our support. Okay, so as you can see, we just created a quick little Gmail account. It's called outdoorsplash at gmail.com. So now that we have this, this is going to be our business. Um, it's going to be our email account for, for our website. We're going to go back to GoDaddy. Okay, and then we'll just come down here. And all we have to do is go to visit my account. Okay, and there's something called workspace email that you'll see. It may be a little bit higher for you, maybe a little bit lower, not sure. Um, you may see some stuff blurred out. Once again, that's just my, my personal information that I don't want out there. So once we find workspace email, we'll hit manage. Okay, and all we have to do is see this little button here is called create forward. And what we're going to do is we're going to forward... Um, outdoorsplash.com because that's when we just purchased okay so that's going to be our, our um, website email and we're going to have it forwarded to the gmail account that we just got so in this case it's outdoorsplash at gmail.com so now anytime someone emails support at outdoorsplash.com, it's going to come directly to the Gmail. The reason why we did this is because we wanted to look more professional. We don't want to have someone emailing a Gmail account with a, um, you know, with a way your website. So it makes it look more professional. So you can actually make it a catch all account. So that means if someone kind of writes something um, wrong, it, it'll still come to you. Um, I like to do that. And we just hit create. So now we have set up our forwarding for Outdoor Splash and we have our Gmail account. So now we're good to go. So we can actually exit out of GoDaddy and we can exit out of Gmail here. And now we can so support at outdoorsplash.com. Okay, we'll set up a password. Okay, and our store name is outdoor splash and here we go we're going to create our store and just now as it starts creating your store here just kind of starts getting all the things together and whatnot so as we wait so it's going to ask you a couple of questions here now these here don't get hung up on these questions just just it's just basically a survey um they, they just want to know you know what you're doing um for the purpose of this training i'll just put i'm not selling products yet and how much does your business make currently? We'll just put zero, I'm getting started. Let's hit next. So in here, you just have to put in your personal information um, pertaining to your yourself. 
Um, you may see some stuff blurred out here. Once again, I just want my, don't want my personal information out there. So yeah, you just you simply just type all this stuff in. Okay. Um, I'll go ahead and pause this while I do that. All right, now that it, we've put in our personal information, here's what we come to. So this is what's called your, your back office, okay? This is where you're gonna be able to set everything up that we're just about to go through. And let's dive right into it. So the first thing that I like to do when um, starting any store is go to the settings, okay? So the first thing you wanna do is um, just kind of go through here, make sure everything is there correctly. Um, everything should have just transferred over, as you can see, all the information. This is just kind of like showing your time zone, your imperial system, whether it's, you want to do it by pound or ounces. In this case, because we're in the U.S., we're going to do it by, by pounds. Um, so everything there is, is, is correct. Um, we'll go to the payment section here. This is the next thing. So what you do in the payment section is there's two forms of payments that you typically want to take on your website and one is um, you know with your credit cards which is your visa your mastercard and those typically are processed through, through shopify payments or stripe okay now this keep in mind this is only available for residents in the united states canada australia the united kingdom and ireland okay so if you're not in one of those countries you're going to have to have a different merchant processor and um, paypal PayPal is another one that um, you can also do payments with. So this is actually really easy to set up. Um, we we'll just go ahead and, and set up Shopify payments here. You just hit complete account setup. And this is pretty straightforward here. Um, as a person, um, unless you have an LLC or a corporation, you're going to be a, a sole proprietor. So that could stay the same there. And you just want to have your address of where um, your, your business is. Um, you're going to have to put some personal information here, like your date of birth and the last four digits of your social security number. Okay. And then, um, the merchant processor, they want to know like what kind of stuff you're, you're going to sell. Right. So you just want to tell them what you're going to sell, depending on what type of store you're opening. So for like my example would be, um, we will sell an array of outdoor items. So basically just keep it really simple. Don't you don't have to get too into detail. Okay. And then your customer billing statement. Now this is going to show up on when a person makes a purchase on um, your website, this will show up on their invoice. So you, if you don't want it to say something, you know, maybe um, your name doesn't kind of correspond with it. So you can actually change that up. So this is fine here. Um, Outdoor Splash is the name of our website. And if you want to have an alternate phone number, maybe you use your personal phone number in the beginning, and now you want to have a business line, you can actually change that there. And then your banking information, right? You're going to have to um, have a, a bank account. Uh, typically, it should be one that's dedicated to, to your business or to your website. Very easy to open up. Just go to your local bank and just tell them you want to open up a bank account um, for your business and they'll, they'll walk you through the process. And once you have that, you just need to put your routing number and your account number right in these two little boxes. And that's actually where your, um, your payments will be deposited into your account. So once you have all of that stuff filled in, you simply just hit a complete account setup and then we'll go to the next. Um, section. So we'll, we'll actually go back to the payment section. And you also, um, if you don't have PayPal, um, you can just go to paypal.com and set up a PayPal account so you can hook it up to your business. This is pretty straightforward as well. Um, you just set it up there and you can actually deactivate it if you don't want it. Um, or just keep it Okay, now we'll go to the checkout settings. Okay, so for um, these settings here, these, keep in mind everything that, that, that I'm going through is just my process of how I do it. Um, there's, um, this is a pretty straightforward and streamlined process. Um, so for customer accounts, I don't like to have them completely disabled, right? I, and I don't like to have them required. What I like to do is just have them optional. Some, some customers like to have an account that way, maybe when they purchase in the future, like there's, their information is going to already be pre-filled. They can actually log in and see the status of their orders and such. So I like to have it optional. I don't like to have them disabled. 
um, Shopify, they actually have it disabled by default. Um, continue down here. These are going to be form options. So these options here are when a customer checks out on your website. Okay, what information do you require or what information do you want? By default, um, only last name is required, which is good. Company name is, is hidden. That's fine. Um, address line number two is typically optional where it shows you like the suite number, the apartment number, etc. And phone number. I don't like to have it hidden. I actually um, like to have it optional because in the future, like if the person actually puts in their phone number, um, you can actually do some promos um, and send text message promos. Or maybe there might be a question about the order where you may need to um, contact you know the customer directly and you may want to do that by phone so i like to have it optional instead of just hidden okay by um the order processing level uh, this is by default when the customer um is checking out that the billing address stays the same as the shipping i like to keep that by default that way the customer doesn't have to fill in their address twice okay here this next one is very important and it's, it says, ask permission to send promotional emails to your customer for your store. So by default, Shopify actually puts, puts does not agree. I like to change that to by default customer agrees. So that means that you can actually market to that customer through email marketing in the future. So I like to automatically um, have the customer opt in they can actually um if they don't want to opt in there's that there's actually a box in the checkout settings that can, they can remove okay after an order's been paid i like to do not automatically fulfill them and so you actually do it additional stuff is here you just leave it blank your checkout language um uh, me personally is english maybe you may be in a different part of the world so it may be different um but we'll do english okay so now down here is your refund privacy in terms of service statement. Um, Shopify does a really good job by just having these um, sample refund policies able to generate there. So I like to just use this, the sample ones that we have here. Those do very well. And actually, it like it pre-populates um, the name. You see here our email support, so it automatically pre-populates that. It puts the name of your store you know, your address, your business address and such. And it just makes everything very clear and concise for the customer. And we'll go ahead and save that. Okay. So let's, let's continue on and we'll go to, um, we'll skip over shipping for this part right here and we'll just continue down here and we'll, we'll jump back to it. Taxes, um, taxes are going to have to be paid. Um, no matter what, you're going to have to pay taxes if, if depending on the state that you live in and if a sale is made in that state, um, either you have to pay the taxes or your customer has to pay the tax. So I like to have the customer pay the tax and I just usually um, I send the payment in. So it says all taxes are included in my price. Do not have that checked. We'll just leave that um, default there. Okay. And then everything else here, notifications. This is this is all later stuff that you can um, all customize. These are emails that are sent out to your customer. In certain instances, you can change these up later or personalize them to to your liking. Okay. File section. This is just a section where if you upload any pictures to your website, they'll actually come here. Sales channel. You can add additional sales channel to have um, different. Uh, having used to sell your products for the default i mean for the training we'll just keep it on online store and then account um, this is where you would actually add in your account information or your credit card so you get billed as you can see here we're just in the trial version so if you want to add a staff account maybe you have hired somebody you can add them here okay so what we'll do now is We'll dive into setting up um, the shipping, the shipping settings. Shipping settings can kind of get a little confusing and um, whatnot, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys different scenarios and different rules that we'll set up for shipping. So when we get to the shipping, first things first, what you want to do is 
you want to disable this, this carrier shipping. First thing first, we're going to go to manage carriers here and simply we're going to hit deactivate. Okay. And we're going to deactivate that. We don't want, um, that, that certain setting there. And basically what that does is Shopify actually thinks they, they, they do you a favor by, um, estimating the shipping rate for your customer based on the, the how much the product weighs, but for the way we're going to set it up, we don't need carrier shipping. Okay, there's another setting here, all the way down here at the bottom, that's automatically set by default, and it's packages. Okay, so this sample box, we actually, we want to um, weigh it at zero pounds, because by it having some weight here, it actually can um, mess up our shipping rules in the future. So we're going to just weigh it at zero and hit save. So those first two, um, those two things need to be done um, there first. So as you can see, it's zero there, and we deactivated the carrier shipping. So next, what we're going to do is we're going to set up shipping rules, okay. and we're going to set up shipping rules for different types of offers. So mainly, when we run offers, um, there's there's certain different offers that we run. Okay, so we're gonna at some points we're gonna offer free shipping to our customers right maybe they they order a certain amount and um, we want to offer free shipping or maybe we want to offer free shipping on just a certain product um there's going to be offers where we're going to run that maybe we're going to give the the product away for free and charge a premium shipping price and then there's going to be offers where we're just going to charge like a flat rate in shipping you may just order like for instance a t-shirt or a coffee mug and we just want to charge like a flat rate for for um, shipping so for those we have to actually set up individual rules and rates for each one of those scenarios and i'm going to break it down um i'm going to break it down for you guys here so okay from the shipping um settings let's actually go back there um so we come to the zone and rates um area okay and what we're going to do is we're going to come to where it says domestic and we're going to hit edit okay and you may get a little error up here and it says your shipping zone doesn't have any rates you need to add at least one rate to accept orders so that's exactly what we're going to do we're going to add these rates or these rules so you can see that there, there's two different, um, well, there's actually three different, but we actually disabled the, the carrier calculated rate because we don't want that. We don't want that to be an option for our customers, okay? So you can do rules and rates based on price, right? Based on a customer's order price. So if they order like 50 bucks worth of stuff, maybe you want to charge them a certain amount. Or maybe if they order $100 worth of stuff, maybe you want to offer a certain amount. Or you can do weight-based rates. And that's exactly what we're going to emphasize on for, for this um, for this website. We're going to do weight-based rates. So like I was saying earlier, we do three different type of offers. And one of them is the free plus shipping. So when you do a free plus shipping, you typically give the product away for free or at like a very deep discount. And you kind of charge like a premium shipping price because um, typically the the... The product that you're giving away for free has a high perceived value and people will justify paying a higher shipping price based on that so when we add products to our store which we'll do later on i'll show you um and if the product is going to be a free or promotional one what we're going to do is we will actually weigh that item at 0.1 pound and i'll go ahead and show you guys what i mean here when i add this rate so we'll go ahead and hit add rate, load up, we'll hit add rate, and there you go. This will load up here. And when you name the, the rate, you can actually name it whatever you want, but the customer, keep in mind the customer will um, see this at checkout. So for this one here, um, I'll actually just name it USPS shipping, and I'll name them all of that. So I'll just go ahead and copy that. That way we'll just paste it in. So what we're going to do is for the one free item, we're going to name it, we're going to weigh it at 0.1, okay? And we're going to put the maximum weight at 0.1. So anytime you add a free or promotional product, you're going to um, weigh it at 0.1. And for that rate, we're, um, you can char 
different shipping prices, but what I found that works best for me is 7.95. So $7.95 um, if the customer gets one free item. Okay, and we'll hit done. Okay, so then what we'll do is now we have to set up another rule. So if the customer gets two free items, okay, so we'll add another one and we'll just paste our um, USPS shipping in there. And so point one is one free item. So point two is two free items, right? So point two to point two. And for that, um, we're not going to just completely double it, but we'll just almost double it. So it'd be 14.95, $14.95. And we'll hit done. Okay. So then we'll add in another rate. Here we go again. USPS shipping. We'll do 0 0.3, 0 0.3. Okay. And then here we'll do 19.95. Now keep in mind, these rates that I'm putting in here, these were the ones that worked best for me. Um, you can test different rates, a little bit higher, a little bit lower, and see exactly what works. So we hit done here. And we'll add this rate here. Same thing, USPS here. 4.4. 4. And for this one here, 24.95. Okay, and we'll hit done. Okay, so now what I've done here is I've set up four different shipping rules based on people purchasing, or excuse me, people, yeah, excuse, um, people purchasing um, a free or promotional item. So if they were to get one free item to be $7.95, two free items, $14.95, $19.95, and so on. So what I like to do is, um, the reason why we did only four was I like to cap them off at four. So if you check in the Techademics toolbox, there actually will be like a an app that will help um, put a limit to customers ordering more than four free items. Okay, so now what we'll do now is we'll actually set up the rates for the retail products. So with the retail products, what I like to do is set up, um, if you add a retail product, meaning it's not free or promotional, just a regular priced item, you're going to weigh it at one pound. Okay, and what we'll do is we'll just add the rates here. So I, I named those as well, USPS shipping, one pound to one pound, and what I like to charge is 4.95. Okay, done. Now, so basically what I'm going to do now is just um, fill in the rest of the shipping rules. I'm just going to pause the video and fill them all in. And then I'll explain exactly what I did. That way um, you guys can just copy the, the same template. So I'll. Okay. So as you can see, I filled out all the shipping rules and all the combinations. I know it looks like a lot. But don't worry. Um, you'll have access to this complete swipe and the Techdemics toolkit showing you all the, um, the rules that they've gone through. But I'll just kind of go through them really quick so you can see. So remember, the point ones are for your free or promotional products, and the, the one pounds are for your retail. So we have um, four promotional rules set up, and then we have the retail. So then we have the retail with the promo product. You can see retail with two promo products, retail with three, retail with four. So we've set up all the rules all the way down. Okay. And we set up, um, if it's five pounds and up, we're actually going to offer free shipping because by then, you know, the customer has purchased a ton of retail products and we'll add one more rate and I'll explain it as I do it. And we're going to name this one free shipping. So there's going to be times where you're going to want to, um, you know, promote free shipping on certain products. And the way you can do that is by weighing all your items that you want free shipping at zero pounds. So we'll do zero to zero and that's free shipping. So anytime you want a product that's free shipping, just weigh it at zero and it'll automatically be free. So we've added that free one. So once you've inputted all these shipping rules, and then all you have to do here is hit save. And 
there we go. So now all of our shipping rules are set up. Good to go. Already. So now, um, now that we're done setting up all these here in the settings, now what we're going to do is we're going to actually come in here to our online store and set up our actual store. First thing we'll do here is we'll come to the domains. Okay. And remember, since we bought a domain earlier, we can actually just hit add an existing domain and we purchase outdoor splash dot com so we'll add that domain and it's actually through GoDaddy so we can con log into GoDaddy and it does like a one-click um, connection with it so it'll log me in and we'll hit connect and it'll put that domain to work close the window and literally just that quick now we have both of our domains set up okay for our primary our primary domain we can um, set it up to be um, either one and what we like to do is re redirect all traffic to this domain um, we all pick the last one out splash.com and we'll hit save okay so now that it saves it you can see that you can go to outdoorsplash.com or you can go to www.outdoorsplash.com either one will work um, it'll kind of set it up for you so once we have that um, set up here now we'll just come here to the preference section now, earlier I, I, I mentioned um, if you had two things handy, that would be great. And one of, the, one of them was a Google Analytics account. And basically what Google Analytics does is it gives you in, in detail reporting and, anal, and analytics on your website. Um, I do recommend that you have this installed. Um, it's very easy to do. It actually just has like a little snippet of code that you can put here if you already have that set up. Um, and if you don't already have it set up, you can just click here and there's an article on how to set this up. Very easy to do. Um, another thing is your Facebook pixel. Um, there's actually just like a little pixel code here that you um, would place. I can actually show you guys how fast and easy that is to do. If you just go to your ads manager, okay, in, in your Facebook um, ads manager, you come here to your tools, click on pixels, and you would see the pixel ID comes up here where we would just copy that um, little ID there and you can just paste that here and that would be your Facebook pixel. Very simple and easy to do. Um, not much to go there. So when you first have your store, it's actually going to be password protected. That way um, customers can't go onto your storefront and purchase anything that may not be ready because essentially your store is under construction, right? You don't want people just kind of wandering around on that. So you can actually, um, here's your, your password here. Once you pick your plan um, down here, you actually can remove that password. But for the meantime, you have to use a password to log into your store. Okay. So once we have all that stuff set up, now we just come here to the theme section. Okay, so your theme section, basically a theme for your store is your skin. It's going to be how, how your store looks, how, the feel, what type of response it has. Okay, so there, Shopify does a great job and they actually have a ton of free themes that you can go through, okay, and, um, and pick, right? So for this one here, we'll use Venture simply because um, it's kind of like an outdoors um, website that we're going to create here and venture kind of has that outdoor look so it, it actually it'll show you like a little preview of what it'll look like this here has three styles included okay and it looks pretty good so we'll just hit install venture and as this here installs we'll give it a second and all you have to do here is once it installs it, then we can hit uh, publish theme. Okay. And we're going to publish it. It'll ask you again. Okay. And then once it's published, then we can actually customize the theme. So here's going to be um, our theme here. And basically this is going to, this is a preview of our website. Okay. So you can actually see there's nothing really going on. It's just a simple skin, but we're now we're going to just bring some life into it. So earlier I mentioned a, um, a couple of things to have handy if you did. 
and one of them was a store logo okay and if you don't have a store logo that's okay because um, I'm going to show you guys a pretty quick and easy service that you can use that's free to make a store logo. So if you go to logomaker.com, once again, all these resources that I'm mentioning are going to be in a Techademics toolkit. So you can just kind of cross-reference that if I'm just going too quick for you, you can pause the video or whatnot. So basically what Logomaker is, it's, it's an easy, um, has a bunch of clip art and little clippings of... Um, logos that you you can use that are free so our our store is going to be called outdoor splash so when i think of splash i kind of think of water or waves um so i'll show you guys how simple this this can be you don't have to spend a lot of time looking making a logo because once again all this stuff can be changed in the future we're just trying to get something up that um we can just start driving traffic to and start making some money okay so um i guess let's start here let's see Okay, so like sea, wave, ocean. Let's go with this little sea here. Okay. Um, outdoor, because it's outdoor, we'll actually go with like a green color. Green. Right. Get some text going. Um, let's call it outdoor. Um, some more text. Grab another text here. Yeah, we just nice. Okay, so we'll move this over there. Move this here. Okay, so we can just kind of line up some text. We'll put this there. And ladies and gentlemen, literally just a few seconds, few minutes, we can have just a now. Once again, this doesn't have to be the best or prettiest logo. Okay. We're just we we simply just kind of want something up, okay, that, that we can just have. And later on, right, we can actually use our resources and, and go out um outsource. But like for me, I think that's this here works. This works for me there so we we'll just literally hit save logo okay so it'll ask you where you want to save it we'll save it right there on the desktop logo okay so boom it saved it so first thing we'll do is we'll just put our logo so we'll come here to the header okay the header section is the top part and we'll hit upload image okay and literally pick our logo here hit open and there we go, Outdoor Splash, Alrighty. So now that we have our logo there, um, really simple, like I said, just uh, it doesn't have to be really pretty. I'm just, for the purpose of the video, we're just trying to get something up, okay? So we'll just hit Save. Okay, so it saves that there. Now we'll hit back here. Okay, so now um, we'll just go ahead and go to the general settings and we'll look at different colors. See, you can actually just choose different this is pretty cool so you can actually choose different colors there's no coding required right if you want to just experiment and have something looking different so we'll just try something like that have a little dark color and we save maybe you want to change you know th this color of the button and you want to have it something you know that kind of appeals more towards you okay so we'll just do that i like that the text color there have a little bit of blue okay and we'll hit back everything keep it pretty simple you can dive in here um and change font right all this stuff is like all interchangeable but for for the sake of um the training and not to, to space it out too long we'll just kind of leave everything at a default okay um social media if you have your facebook profiles your twitter your pinterest your favicon which is this little logo up here like you can see shopify or this free logo maker right that's a favicon so we you can actually um we can come here actually and, and make a favicon we'll just remove the words okay and we'll save that that could be our favicon okay so we'll just name it 
BabyCon, right? Really simple stuff. Don't have to think too hard about it. All right, this stuff's pretty easy. Now we'll upload image and there's our BabyCon. Okay, so we'll upload that and we'll hit save. So that's gonna be ours. Now we'll go back here. Now all this stuff, once again, look, check out if you wanna add um, some background images for the checkout. Okay, so we can actually add a logo for checkout here. Okay, I actually have this logo pre-made. This is going to all be in a Techonomics toolkit. Once again, all these these um, these swipes here are shipping rules. Once it's available, we'll have it all available. And once again, you might see some stuff blurred out. That's all just my personal stuff. I have that there. Earn a little trust badge there. Okay, we'll hit save. Okay, we'll come back, and we'll come back to this section. Now, in the section here, you can actually put like slideshows, okay, and make this really personal. So I'll show you guys how simple that can be. Okay, so if we add um, a slide here, just literally add a slide. Okay, it'll tell you, um, you can upload the image here. Just simply, what, I, what I'll do is for the slide, I like to kind of put a lifestyle photo that goes with the, um, the website. Okay, so um, we can easily just come to Google, right? Google's our friend here, and we can just type something like uh, outdoor stock photos, right? Okay, now there's certain websites that you can go and actually get stock photos for free, but we're just going to use the good old image section here. Okay, now for these here, um, you want to do search tools. Here's a little trick, right? You want to go to size. You want these to be large. Okay, and the usage rights, we can't use just any picture here because some of them are actually, you have to pay for, they're, they're, they don't have reuse rights. So we can actually hit usage rights and, and go to labeled for reuse and kind of see if you see any pictures that might go for your web with your website theme that you might want to use, right? And if you don't see anything, there's, like I said, there are images. Um, this one here actually looks pretty cool. So actually, we'll just view this image here, and I'll save this to my computer. Okay, and we'll use that as a slide. Save it right there on the desktop. Slide. Okay, now we'll come back to our slide, and we just upload that image from our desktop. Name slide. Hit open. And let this load and see how it looks. Once again, all this stuff here is, you don't have to spend too much time on it. But for the purposes of the training, I'm just kind of showing you guys how fast and easy it is. Just by just thinking of just a little bit of creative stuff that you can do. So as this, this image loads up, looks like it's going to load up here. We just hit save. And there you go. So now we're just we're bringing life to our site, right? And if you want to add another one, right? If we if we just kind of want to go through here and say, hey, let's see what else we have here. That looks kind of cool, right? It kind of resonates with outdoors, right? We can use that, or maybe this one, right? Maybe this one looks kind of like it might go with it. So we can you know easily save it. It's not such a great quality one, so actually well, I won't put that one on the website. But like I said, you don't have to spend too much time doing this stuff, right? You can just kind of look, see if you find anything, right? That one looks kind of cool. So we'll save that image back on our desktop. All right, name it slide two. Come back here, and you can easily, so where this says slide, you can say, check out our product. View all products. And here we can add an, another slide. Okay, or this one here. Next slide. Upload image. Okay, now slide number two. Really easy stuff, guys. Now, all this stuff, like I said, is all interchangeable later on. You don't have to dwell on it too much, but I am just showing you guys how fast and easy it is that you can just add, add, add photos and add slides, like on the fly. We'll hit save, let it load up. Okay. One second, it's loading. Okay. And, and
and here we have the other slide right so now we're bringing life to our website see so, so we have two slides on there right bringing life to our outdoor website that we literally just started just maybe a, a few um about 30 minutes ago okay so this is this is kind of something that you can spend your own time on and and uh make it to your liking right and just kind of get creative think outside the box you see easy stuff all right so we'll just hit save and we'll just we'll just go back we'll go back to um once again now all this stuff here is all interchangeable you can add all different things on there it's just up to you to kind of go through it and um make it to your liking right you don't have to spend too much time on it we'll simply we'll go back to shopify now that we're kind of putting stuff in and we'll actually go and we'll add a product we'll add our first product and then we'll kind of sum everything up and um go on with that so easy to add a product right you just come here to your product section we just hit add products okay so um right before this i started the training i actually just went to the supplier's website and i actually picked out um uh an item that I was going to add to the store for the purpose of this training. Um, so first thing you want to do is we'll just go. I know where the images are, so we'll go to the image, upload image. OK, so we'll come here to the product. Right. So you can see we're going to add a tent so you can actually select all the pictures of the product you have. OK, and we'll hit open. Just like that. OK, and I actually also have a um, description of this this same item from the manufacturer so let me just pull that up really quick simply take it here and uh, <clears throat> copy the description easy stuff getting this directly from the manufacturer there actually it will be an import tool in the techonomics toolkit to make this really um, streamlined and fast but for the purpose of the video we're just doing this here just paste that in there okay it's a high density five person tent so we'll just come here and put that as the title Okay, make it look a little bit better here with some capital letters, right? Make it look nice. And then we go. So for this tent here, it's going to be a retail product, right? So we'll go ahead and charge, you know, we're um, thirty-four ninety-nine. Okay, and you could put a compare at price um, here, seventy like ninety-nine. Now these prices, how I'm coming up with these prices is because um, we're I'm getting the um, this as a wholesale price from the supplier, so we're able to mark it up and um, go accordingly. So, like I said earlier, there's certain offers that you can um, make when you're starting and adding the product. So, in this case, this is going to be a retail offer, right? Or and you can decide if you want to weigh it at zero pounds, which would be free shipping, or one pound, which would be um, retail. So we'll go ahead and weigh this at one pound, okay, which is a retail. And there we go. Now we have our product. Now there's another section here that you want to add tags, right? Tags are extremely important um, to add them now in the beginning and you get used to it because um, what tags do is they kind of categorize your products later on, right? So um, when you're doing Facebook ads and you're doing dynamic product retargeting, it makes it very easy for you to retarget your customers based on items that they viewed or items that they purchased. So for tags here, what I like to do is we'll just start off with the, the tent, right? It's named with the tent, right? It's going to be um, so housing, right? This is some type of housing, right? It depends just how deep you want to go into it. And go with your tags. So for this one, we don't have to go too deep. We'll just do housing intent. Um, and we'll just kind of leave it at that. Now for here, for the vendor and the product type, um, I usually leave these blank until I've added this into a collection. We'll explain more on that later on in trainings. But for now, we'll just keep this really simple. And we'll just hit save. So literally, we've it says, congratulations, you've added your first product. Right, this is awesome. So let's go ahead and let's see if we can just view it. So as you can see, it's going to be password protected, right? So in this right-hand corner, we can hit um, enter using your password. And if we come here back to the um, the online store, 
preferences, okay? And you come down here, you can actually get your, your password there. So we'll come here and we will copy that, come back to our store and paste it, okay? And now we can see just that quick, like literally just 30 minutes ago, we didn't have a store. And now we do outdoor splash with our first product in our description. Really easy, guys, to set up. Um, hope you guys learned a lot from this training. Um, once again, any resources that I've mentioned in this video, they're going to be available in the Techademics Toolkit as we dive into building this store out and start running ads to it. That's all for this video, guys. Lawrence Aponte signing out for the Ecom Power Team. Be on the lookout next week as we continue the process and have this store evolving. Peace out.